Welcome to the Simply Smart Business Show with me, Gemma Went. Now on this show, I like to share simple, smart strategies that have helped me to create the success I have in my business and helped my clients to create success in theirs. We cover mindset, strategy, and how to take inspired action to get you to the results that you crave. Now, if that sounds good, I would love you to subscribe and even better, leave me a review and let me know what you think about it. But for now, let's crack on with the show. And welcome back for episode three of my Redefining Resistance series, where I'm joined by the amazing Rebecca Ching, leadership developer and psychotherapist. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. I love this conversation. So glad you're doing it. So good. Okay, guys, if you're only catching this episode first, I want you to stop and go back to episode one because you really need to listen to these um, one by one because we're talking through, first of all, in episode one, how to identify resistance. In episode two, how to kind of, get to understand it and start rumbling with it and the things you have to start to do to really get to know what's going on in your system. And then episode three, this one, we're going to be talking about how to unburden and release. Um, so Rebecca, let's start. How do we, So once we kind of really got in with the rumble and we're understanding what's going on for us, what is next? Like how do we unburden ourselves with this? So yeah, this is a nuanced process and, and my, yeah. um, my therapist parts want to make sure to know that this is something that needs to be done with deep care, depending yeah. on your story um, and with the right support, um, mm. specialized support, because if we try to rush to get rid of whatever's the source of our protectors, you know, locking down so hard, we can do more harm. So a trauma-informed leadership lens recognizes in ourselves and others that resistance, however it shows up, is there to protect from some deeper pain in someone's story. And we don't have to fix it. We don't have to be responsible for it, but it can impact how we lead ourselves and others when resistance and protection show up. But the way that this ecosystem of internal family systems work, we talked about the self and the qualities of self, which is really the healing agent. Ultimately, that's where my clients, as as they develop their lifelong practice, their self-leadership practice, they can start to do this more on their own. I don't know if I'll ever do it without support, (laughs) to be honest with you, but I'm also a raging extrovert. And so I'm always like an an external processor. Um, But you've got the place of self, you've got these protectors that have a good intention, even if their intention or how they're helping you is harming you. And really what these protectors are doing is keeping this other section of our inner system, what we call the exiled section. Uh, Dick, Dick addresses them, Dick Schwartz addresses them, the founder of IFS, so the basement children, you know, that we kept them away. Um, <laughs> and these exiles that are carrying the deep shame, the deep uh, despair, um, the trauma, the alienation, um, these things that even just saying those words, I felt my stomach get a little queasy. So even just saying them, a lot of people are like, oh, Rebecca, back it up. We don't do this. And I just want to have a sidebar here. This is something, especially I went through a leadership coaching program uh, to get a a high-end certification uh, for my new company. And a lot of my, my colleagues, my dear colleagues that I went through the program with worked for corporations that you know, some of the world's best known global brands. And every time I said trauma, their eyes got all big. I'm like, no, no, no. Let's talk about compassion. <laughs> Let's talk about empathy. <laughs> and I'm like, um, well, we can white knuckle for a while. But if we acknowledge the word trauma and these burdens that people carry, even internally, we don't even have to say it out loud to those that we're leading. We can go, oh man, I'm curious if there's some deeper trauma there that might explain this intensity of the reaction. Have compassion for the the resistance, the offloading and someone else. Doesn't mean that we don't have boundaries and accountability. I want to be very clear on that. Mm. But we can lead with more integrity from that. 
that helps us not get as burnt out and feel as reactive and exhausted when that shows up in people that we are responsible for, or that we are just in our lives. Um, so it's hard and it can be exhausting. But these burdens, these our, our protectors, our resistance works over time to make sure that these burdens, these exiled parts of ourselves don't overwhelm us. These parts say, we've got shit to do. We've got to make sure we pay the mortgage. We got to make sure we keep the business running. We got to make sure we keep the, re- the relationship thriving, whatever the thing is. And so if we feel the shame, if we feel the depression, if we feel um, the despair, we won't function. And many people have been there, right? We've been there where we've been taken out by this pain. And so our nervous system has embedded that. So they say, we can't go there. Let's not even acknowledge it. If we acknowledge it, we give it credibility and hell no, we're going to just let it go. But it's like kind of me saying, I am right-handed, so I'm going to let go of my left hand. (laughs) I don't need it. I got my right hand. You can't <laughs> cut these parts out. You yeah. can't. And that's what we're learning from this multiplicity approach of our inner world. And that's a lot of the messages is cut it out, let it go, crush it, kill it. And by doing that, we further exile and could kind of almost re-traumatize the pain in ourselves, or we end up doing that to other people unintentionally. Mm. So even if you're not in the position of unburdening that for others, or you, you get not even totally there to do it all on your own, just recognizing, oh my gosh, what's behind these protectors. When I get to know the different parts of me, I've got a, like a little mean girl cluster. Mm. I've got a wonder woman part of me. And when I understand their fears, if they don't do their job, what'll happen? It usually goes back to these exiles. I'm afraid that the shame is going to wave over you or you're going to get hurt again by people, you know, that are supposed to protect you. And so when I, then I can just have compassion and even sometimes just witnessing and sitting, not with it, not with like, okay, you need to believe this. I need to, or I need to go in and rescue you. Right. How many entrepreneurs do you know that have that deep over-functioning empathy, fix it all. Oh my gosh. Exhausted. Me. Me. <laughs> right. So we don't want to lead from that space, but if we, yeah. if our system are, and, and what's tricky is, is often these protectors need to trust us first, the resistance protectors, mm. they need to trust 2020 us that we can sit with that before they'll relax and let us even access that. So that's a lot of the work that I do with clients is helping their systems trust that even if they connect with those exiled parts that are holding the burdens in their system, so that takes some time. Um, sometimes it doesn't. It just depends on, and often with my established leaders, they've done a buttload of work in their life. So sometimes this moves quicker because they've been full on in to the latest thing to grow, to heal, to strengthen. And so it's really fun um, for folks that have kind of white knuckled and just done just pure mindset work and nothing else. Sometimes it's a little bit more time because they don't have as much of that internal awareness, which isn't right or wrong. It makes sense because there's so much, I mean, mindset has a purpose. Positive psychology has a purpose until it doesn't help. And it can unintentionally do harm if you're further exiling Mm. those burdens in your system. So it's kind of the physics of the way your system works. And so self often can get covered up by these protectors, but when self can access these exiles and then there's that connection. That's where the healing happens. So that's a very, very short version of that. And the unburdened process can look different for everyone. It's beautiful. I just, I just did one with a client yesterday and I, I just, I get so excited because, and I, I love this about Dick Schwartz because he, his belief is that the more unburdened the world is, the safer and the more healthy and the, the, the more greater good work can be done in the world. And so this, it's, it's such a bigger thing. And with the leaders who desire, I work with who desire to have an impact to the greater good, in addition to thriving businesses and organizations and families is to have an impact beyond themselves. This really feels like it integrates beautifully. So, and, and it's a layered process. Sometimes it's not just one and done, you know, and sometimes these burdens, and this might be woo for some people, um, for me, faith and spirituality is a very, very, very big part of my life. So it it fits in my framework. Um, and this really does fit into a lot of different lenses of what faith and spirituality mean for people. But sometimes these burdens are not coming from inside. Sometimes there's what we call unattached burdens mm. or legacy burdens. 
Um, I, you know, I, I am half Jewish. And so there's connection to a lot of pain in Eastern Europe, <laughs> a lot. Um, my birth father fought in Vietnam. And mm. there's some things that I had discovered that, that he had with him that glommed onto me. Um, and again, this sounds weird, I know, probably to some people. And there's parts of me going, Rebecca, you sound like a loony Benz right now. So I'm just <laughs> speaking for that part of me. But I, I think there's an element that there's things that we don't see. And, yeah. and we got to handle with care. And we, But I, I love just, I think there's an element of faith where you believe in the unseen. And for those that really just want everything certain, this work can be tricky. Um, yeah. But there's such a space. And, I, and Dick Schwartz came from a space of being near atheist when he started this work. And now oh, he's wow. a deeply spiritual person. Because I had no idea. Him doing this work. And yeah, it's been really cool to see, to learn more of his story and see the evolution mm. and and the impact of that. And so this is a very respectful and permission-based approach, which mm. is, again, if you think of all the isms, the sexism yeah. and the racism and again all of yeah. these things that we breathe in they're not respectful or permission based at all so this is a very mm. humanizing approach humanizing the protectors that often can cause a lot of pain and keep things small or stuck or challenging humanizing the exiles that often are despised and um feared by parts of me mm. And if you think that we channel that outward when, again, and this is, I I really think if you haven't read Brene Brown's book, Braving the Wilderness, it is Mm. essential read now more than ever, ever since it came out. Yeah. And talk in this approach really integrates because it's, uh, it keeps me from dehumanizing others Mm. that are dehumanizing right now. If you think what's going on in the world and, and it's a spiritual practice for me to go, Okay, this person was a baby once. This person had a mom. <laughs> you know, these people that are doing these horrendous things that are so evil and dire and negligent yeah. um, and so on, it, it can consume me. But when I check in with those parts that rage and that despair and also have compassion for that, again, it's not remiss of accountability or boundaries. Hell no, <laughs> there's still going to be accountability and boundaries and do my, I'm going to do my part on that. So there's, there's often spontaneous unburdenings that happen just by when I witness those things in my system, or if I invite someone else who's helping me with that, uh, with my, my coach or my therapist who both are IFS savvy, um, then there's witness, just the witnessing. Sometimes there can be some relief. <laughs> Um, but it's a process. It's a process yeah. and it really takes a lot of trust. And that's a big component is the system trusting you, the present you and understanding the present you. Um, and it feels tedious and it feels woo woo. It feels mushy gushy feelings e. Um, but we are, I, I believe we are feeling people who think not thinking people who feel. I love that. I love that. And I, I actually really love the language of this. I mean, you know, I'm very spiritual anyway, so I, I absolutely under, understand and agree with that side of it. But I love the language of this. If you think about the language that we, and the words that we've been using, you know, unburden versus fix. And yes. do, you know, do you know what I mean? It's like, it, it just feels so much nicer. And the fact that, the sheer fact that we can start to use this resistance as a positive thing to help us heal and grow. I think for me, when I, when I saw it as that, it completely turned resistance on its head from being this negative brick wall that was in front of me to this shining light of opportunity for me to learn something and evolve and move to the next stage. And I think this kind of really getting comfortable with it, really understanding with it, really getting used to the rumble and understanding what's going on in your system. And then thinking about how you can unburden and how you can release some of that stuff while not being hell bent on, right, I'm going to fix this. And then in two days I shall be fine. Like getting away from that kind of thinking 
and just taking it yeah. as it comes up, I think makes us more kind of more human humans. Like we really feel into we are. it, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and again, it's healing and growth, but I also want to speak to the business owners and the entrepreneurs that you lead and serve. It also impacts profit. Oh my God. So much. um, The vision of the business, because we have the capacity then to tolerate the growth. And and I think this is where I I really see, you know, Brene's concept of vulnerability is if we can tolerate vulnerability, right? More, that means we more unburdening, more befriending our system, more self-leadership than our parts when they're like, oh no, you're going to die if you get rejected or, oh no, you're going to lose everything. And you're like, no, actually we're not. But, but no matter what happens, I'm with you. Yeah. And I've got this and I've got you. And they go, oh, okay. That self, not like, not from a bully, like just zip it and move over. I got this, but just yeah. from a place of compassion and confidence and calm. Oh my gosh, I just, I even feel it right in my solar yeah. plexus here when I, when I speak from that. And, yeah. and so I, it, it really is a game changer of, you know, if fusing what, you know, Brene's vision of making the world a braver place, right? Mm. This, this approach helps give these roots to do that on a sustained level for, for me. And I'm now seeing with my clients. And so it's hard to not do one without the other for me, but yeah. And, and again, the words healing and growth to even admit that I think is really scary for people. Um, But I just want to say that I really believe in every person that's listening to this and the impact they can have. And if they lead themselves well and do the work to befriend those (laughs) resistance, and if they need to do deeper unburdening work, so that they can also hold space for others who are in the same rumble. And then that the domino effect, Mm. I think we are poised now to create more pockets of that space. And um, again, it doesn't feel efficient and tidy based on what you and I grew up with and the message we have. Um, But if we have a critical mass doing this, which we're starting to see, which is so because of the thought leaders like Brene and Dick, Oh my gosh, it is so exciting to me. And I'm here, I'm here for that. And again, this is a trauma informed approach. We're not going to re traumatize as we grow our businesses and build our businesses and start movements. We're actually going to do it in a way that cultivates healing and, as you said, and growth. Yeah, absolutely. And I just, I'm really excited about the potential for this. You know, I think we've, We've seen really clearly that there is an absolute need for more female and empathic led leadership across our world in every area. We're not just talking about the business world, but in every single area. And I think for all of us that want that, it all starts with us. And most Amen. people, most people think, well, you know, I can't, I can't affect who is heading up the global economy but actually there is that ripple effect that we can all have and if we're all doing this this work and we all step into self-leadership and we're all doing this inner work to be people that are kind of coming from the right place and are leading from the right place and then that has a ripple effect on every single person that we work with, it doesn't matter how many people you work with, from five to 5,000, you're having that ripple effect with those people. And then they go on and have that ripple effect. And that's why it all starts with us, because it all starts to ripple across the world. And that's, you know, when I shared with you that I had to step back at the beginning of the pandemic, and do my own rumbling because my system was just overloaded with fear. When I stepped back in and into more of a, much more of a leadership role than I ever was before, that's where I came from. It's like, I, I heard it loud and clear. It's our time to change and to make a difference. And it all starts with us. It all starts with us. So Jim, would you say though, that, that, that week where you kind of in the hard stop and then you did the a big week long U-turn, right? 
that was the, and the feedback you got from your system was the culmination of a lot of work you've done in your lifetime. It's just another, and it was another phase of it, right? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's important to note that it's a scaffolding Mm. of all of your work and that what, you know, this phrase, what got you here today won't get you where you're going. Well, I, Mm. I, I kind of believe that. And that's where I feel like, oh my gosh, these mindset tools and how we look at resistance served a purpose until it doesn't. And mm. you just spending that U-turn time and rumbling with the system and the different differing beliefs and the pol- we often talk about polarization. Different parts are like, you know, shut down the business and go to a commune to start a whole new company and reach the masses. And you know, you're like, oh, and and yeah. really instead of feeling led by them, get curious about. There's gold in the doubt. There's gold mm. in the judgments. There's yes. gold even in the shame because these are the trailheads, yes. the, the path to go on instead of, but there's going to be parts that say, you can't handle it. Shut that shit down. Move away. This isn't efficient. We're not here for that crap. That's not trauma-informed leadership. It's mm. protected leadership. And I, I have an immense respect for it. But mm. for those that are curious and feeling like their system is ready to kind of do more... I really encourage you, go to the ifsinstitute.com website, read a little bit more about that. And Dick Schwartz has two books that I recommend to everybody. Um, The first one is The Introduction to Internal Family Systems. It has some trees on it. It's a cute little book and it's a beautiful, easy read. And the other one is You're the One You've You've Been Waiting For. And it's a couples therapy book, but I give it it to everybody because we're all in relationship. And so I read them in that order and it's a good launching pad to get a little bit more of this framework into your system and to see, and I'm so curious, what are the objections to it? What are the fears and what are the concerns Mm. and start to journal those out? Like, oh man, this is bunk or, but what about this? Just acknowledge all of those objections that come up and notice what's exciting and what feels lighter as you, as you work through that too. So I love that. I love that. Rebecca, thank you so much for joining me. I've loved this series. Um, and, and guys, I really hope you've got something from this. You know, when, when I first started on my journey of learning this stuff from Rebecca, gosh, a couple of years ago, um, it really opened my eyes. And it's been an amazing part of my growth and how I've dealt with my own trauma and my own involvement and what I'm doing in my business and how... I've stepped into a leadership role. Um, So I'm hoping it's done the same for you. We will leave Rebecca's details in the show notes and all of the links to the books and Brene and all the stuff that's been mentioned because if you're feeling the pull to this and if this is kind of really speaking to you, then I really recommend you go check out some of those resources and just get get curious with this stuff because it's, it's powerful. It's really powerful. I appreciate you and your leadership and how you do business and do relationships so well. I'm so grateful for you. Thank you, my darling. Same to you. Thank you for listening to the show. If you liked that and you'd like more, please come on over and join my free Facebook group just by searching for Simply Smart Business in Facebook. You'll find it. Come on in. We have stuff like this every single day. But for now... I'll see you in the next episode.